Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen oracle o r c l e dot com. That's Ord hyphen oracle dot com. Tim has a great newsletter. Go check it out. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, we get uh, we could talk about the uh, gold market, or we can talk about the equity market first. You choose. Let's talk about the gold market. <laughs> All right. There's something really interesting going on here. And it actually has for the last, uh, let's go to chart four. Okay. And this is a real big, uh, big view. Yes. And the middle, the middle window is the, uh, yeah, the monthly XEU gold ratio. Okay. And, and it takes the high of, uh, 1996. And I drew a line on that ratio from the high of 1996 and drew it all the way down to current time frames. Okay. And so, uh, and if you notice there, if you look at, you know, 2022 to, uh, to 2024, the XAU gold ratio is kind of just trending down right against that trend line right below it. Yes. Yes. yes I yes, can see so, that, yep. Uh, um, so anyhow, we're going to go go back and forth here a little bit. Okay. But let's uh, flip. Let's flip to, to chart five. Okay. And chart five, now this is a weekly chart, and that line that I drew from the 1995 high down, that's that red dotted line. I see that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, okay. Now stay with me here. Yeah. So anyhow, so, you know, we're, we're basically just going down on that, that line, and, uh, um, Okay, this this uh, the bottom window is the XAU, the middle window is the XAU gold ratio, yep. and right above the, that ratio is the RSI for that gold ratio. Yes, and, and this is a weekly time frame. So anyhow, I want to point out is when the RSI of the weekly XAU gold ratio goes below thirty and turns up, you get a buy signal, and I circled in blue there right. all the buy signals going back to uh, looks like about 1930 or 2013 and we just got one here uh, I don't know February or February March okay in that time frame yeah you know, so it's going up like it's supposed to and what is going to happen here we're going to run into that trend line going back to 1995 yes and I, I said on your show at some point the minimum uh, when you get a bicycle from this ratio, the minimum went up was 0 0.7, 0 0.07. Okay. That, that's the minimum it went to. Well, if we go to 0 0.07, we're breaking that line going back to 1995. And uh, so that's, that trend line's extremely important. Oh, yeah. In that it's, it's such a long trend line. And so things are about to happen here. Um, and I think that trend line is probably going to break, you know, uh, this year. And if you go to the bottom window, it's it's the XAU, and I got another uh, weekly XAU, and I got a blue trend line on that also. And we're up against that trend line right now. And I thought, you know, uh, and the signals, when the RSI of the weekly XAU gold ratio gets a signal, the minimum duration of the signals are six months. That's the shortest. Sometimes they'll go a year or two. But, you know, minimum six months. What takes us into, you know, September of next, September of this year at a minimum? Well, chances are we're going to break that trend line on the XAU. Chances are we're going to break that trend line on the weekly XAU gold ratio. All right. And so, so anyhow, so when you break a trend line, you know, if you remember Weisskopf, uh, you know, the longer the trend line, the more, uh, the more significant it is yes. when you break it. So, and there's no bigger trend line going back than on the XAU going back to 1996. So I'm going to, what I'm saying is this is probably changing a big character of the market. You know, this market really hasn't done anything uh, other than maybe a year or two rally since 2016. So I'm thinking we're lining up something bigger than that that's probably going to be in the vicinity of like the 2000 type bottom, which you and I were back there doing it. Oh, I yeah. Mean, it, it was it was so it so, was you know, so much fun setting up <laughs> to break the major trend lines, and they're they're not just going to break you know to break them. You're supposed to break them with a sign of strength, right? So that means big volume, big volatility, big you know whatever. 
So I'm thinking this is going to happen between now and September. Or yes. this market totally goes dead here, goes up a little bit, and kind of goes sideways. You know, but we've been moving kind of sideways since 2021. We have. On the ratios and on the XAU. It's time to do something other than, uh, um, you know, it's, it's time, there's time now for due of an impulse wave. Yes. And, 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 and you know, and, Tim, I'm showing, I just put another chart up myself of this XAU. And you can see, folks, okay, the last, you know, Tim was on the air. We failed the last time when we get up here. Man, the last time this went right to the, well, it, last time we went to the line, we gave it up. Time before that, you broke it, gave it up. Time before that, broke it, gave it up. Time before that, just hit the line. So you can, I can, you can see just how powerful this trend line actually is. That's pretty amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it's amazing. So I'll be here. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow up 107, Nasdaq's up five, S and P's are up 12 and a half. And you know, uh, as uh, some of our tigers and tigresses are talking about in the den, we are only 132 points away from 40,000 Dow Industrials, and it does look like they're going to run it into the close. The uh, S and P's we just went up about the seven points in about uh, two seconds, so pretty wild. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking the gold market right now and the chart that I got up, Tim, I still have that XAU gold ratio in the middle, and then the right, weekly uh, gold in the top, yeah. All right, let's go to ch chart six. Okay. Uh, this is just a, uh, a less messy chart. Yes. And so you can kind of really see it for your your audience. Anyhow, that's that red, this, this chart goes back to 1984, and I drew that trend line off the high of 1995, wherever that is. Okay. Drew it down, and he can, and I circled in red where we are right now, and we're just you know the bottom window is the gold market monthly gold. We already broke out on that of that head and shoulders bottom. We already started up. Yes. The gold stocks haven't performed yet, and because that ratio needs to start going up for the gold stocks. Uh, when you know the gold stocks are outperforming gold, this ratio is going up. Yes. And so far the. The, the ratio hasn't gone up yet. You know, you know. It's, so, I don't mean to interrupt you, Tim, but you know what's really cool? So Royal Gold, Tim, and folks, is a streamer. And a streamer specifically, you know, bottom line, they work like a bank. And what I've seen in some of these equities, Tim, right, well, particularly yesterday. So normally when the physical gold market is strong, the streamers are even stronger. Well, that hadn't happened until yesterday. So picture this. The picture went up in Royal Gold, folks. Royal Gold closed the day before yesterday at 109. Well, it's 121 today. This thing took off like a rocket ship yesterday. It went up like $9. It's up another 247 today. So it's like, where did this come from? So that was, and the same with Franco Nevada, FNV. Now, Frank, Franco Nevada didn't go up as high, but the bottom line is that, yeah, well, it's up another buck 80 today. It went from, let's see, what did we do here? Yeah, we went from 113 to 119 in 48 hours. So this is getting intriguing. Do you know what I mean, Tim? In general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what happened after 2000 low. There was kind of pockets. <laughs> there were. It kind of just exploded. And I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. So this is, you know, this is very rare, you know, time in history that we're setting that, you know, we're, you know, yeah, yes, this is, this is like 2000. I mean, I agree. Um, I, you know, the we have a huge deficit. You know, a couple of the numbers, folks out there in the deficit are huge. Now, we have plenty of assets too, so I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole just yet. But the bottom line is that we do have a um, huge amount of debt out there. And what gold is all about is debasing of currencies in general. Do you know what I mean? So. We'll yep. see where that shakes out, but it looks to me, as just as Tim is saying, that this is pretty extraordinary. Well, you know what's extraordinary, Tim, is that the dollar is still up, man. And the dollar, you know, this is the dollar index, and it's like, okay, you know, the correlation is direct, folks, okay? Higher dollar, gold's normally lower. Well, guess what? The dollar <laughs> just went from, look at this move. This is crazy. The dollar just went... Yeah, in the last 15 days, from 102 
to 104.44. And hmm. that's when the gold contract normally gets killed. So, you know, when I'm looking at this, Tim, my, my take is that the dollar is just testing the last high out here. And I think it's going to give it up. But that's pretty incredible what gold has actually done with that dollar, you know, going up also. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. So I, so, so I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, this is unusual type thing going on here, but it's, it's worth, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, so, you know, that's where we are right now. As we're talking, we still haven't broke that line. Right. Let's go to chart number seven real quick. Okay. And this this is actually uh, real time. This is I, I didn't have one on the XAU, which I did, but this is the HUY gold ratio on the monthly time frame. Yes, and it gives buy and sell signals. I showed this chart in the past. Yeah, and it just measures you know when you're above the uh, mid Bollinger Band, you're in an uptrend, and when you're below it, you're in a downtrend. And so far, this ratio HUY is similar to XAU. Yes, um, there is differences, but anyhow, that, that ratio needs to get above. Uh, the mid Bollinger Band and it's been below the mid Bollinger Band since 2021, so that's over three years ago. And the gold stock's been, you know, so it's due. I guess what I'm trying to say, it's been down for three years. It's due for an uptrend, and so it hasn't done it yet. But you know, but I got other bicycles on other methods. Right. Uh, actually, starting back in August of last year, we talked about and the market performed a little bit, but kind of just came back. Didn't really didn't break new lows because I think in the October 2022 low on the XAU or GDX or HUY is an important low. I doubt that low will be even tested and it won't be broken. That's my view right now. And we're already seeing the bottom and we're in a sideways consolidation. And what comes next is a great big impulse wave. And, and I think it's, a, it's going to be a big impulse wave similar to, to 2000. Because we got a lot of longer term trend lines are going to be broken here. Yes. And when you break those long term trend lines, you're not talking about, you know, a week or two of rally. You're talking multi months, if not multi year type things. And when that, Tim's that talking about the, so. you know, the, how the market was set up in 2000, folks, it was set up the same way as that we're talking right now. I mean, uh, the gold contract itself was a little bit different because it was been in a 20 year bear market. But the lines that we're talking about, they were there, and once they were broken, you had an expansion of price that was phenomenal. And if you haven't been in the gold market as to see an expansion of price, well, on the upside or the downside, okay, in this case, we're talking about the upside, it is substantial and it is fast. You know? Yeah, I, we, I remember I uh, had one BGL we, oh. way back there. Now, it was around 25 cents, 30 cents, yeah. where it went to $15 in a right. couple, three years. Right. Uh, and, it just, and that was the only you know, best one. There were penny stocks. That oh, to listen, hey, remember Coeur d'Alene? Coeur d'Alene, we lucked out in Coeur d'Alene, too. Coeur d'Alene was like 25 cents when I bought it, or 30 cents or something. And that was before it blew up, folks. But Coeur d'Alene did the same thing. I mean, they, yeah, it was pretty amazing then. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm thinking there's, you know, will this develop, you know, if you break that, you know, on chart six, if we break that downtrend line that got circled in red there, you know, big things are supposed to happen. Yes. So um, will this time be different? I doubt it. You know, it's, I doubt it, too. It's going to break that trend line. It's, it's going to be something that we haven't seen for a long, long time. It's a beautiful so, thing. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We'll come back and we'll talk about the S&P. We have the Dow up 71. NASDAQ is down 9. S&P is up 6.5. We're coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your corral and a problem with us out here. And folks, uh, and Tim, when you get a chance, Tim, when you get off the air, take a look at Aniko Eagle. The symbol is A-E-M. And the reason that I'm bringing this up, folks, okay, you know, what does happen, we know, Tim, is that some equities will break out sooner rather than later, right? And I just put this up on a monthly basis, Tim. And one of the trend lines that we're talking about now, this one here was like a triple top. But the bottom line is that on a monthly basis, man, this broke this thing with conviction. It has wide price spread, it has accelerated volume. The stock's trading 59. And that high that it's going to go for now is 89. And last month it was 48. <laughs> so 
my, my point, folks, is this, is you're going to see more of this. And, you know, you get leaders, you get laggards. That's the bottom line. So pretty cool, man. Yeah, I'll take a, I take a look at it. I'll, uh, uh, that's what should happen. You know, the, you know, the, the, the generals, I guess, will lead the soldiers. Yes. And, and so there may be breaking out. You know, I, I've got some stocks that are, are looking really good, but they're really, they're built just, they're building cause for the next move. Right. So they're going to tr trickle down. So, right. but anyhow. So let's, let's, let's go look at the S&Ps here. Okay, good. Okay, go to the S&Ps. I, I have the first chart up here, Tim, okay? Yep, first one, and this is, it's a monthly chart. And uh, what this works pretty well. Last, uh, anyhow, when you close, when the 50, when the, the, the spread or the high and low, um, anyhow, if 50% of the trading range closes above the upper Bollinger Band on the monthly time frame, usually the next month, is a sideways month, if not a, a down month. And last month, we did close 50%, not quite, but I balled it. We're above the uh, upper Bollinger Band. Well, this month, we're way above it. Yes. Um, so I'm still thinking we're going to, uh, we're not really, I'm not bearish here uh, because the bigger trends are up. I think ultimately we're going to at least see 5,700 before the year is out, and that's about 10% higher than where the current prices are. But on a short term basis here, you know, with, uh, if you look at March, you know, it looks eyeball on it here. It looks like to me we're about 75% above the upper Bollinger Band as far as the trading range goes. So I still think we're going to see some sort of a pullback, but nothing significant. Right. Because the top or the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio. The VIX uh, starts to go up before the market makes the top, and that hasn't happened here. The VIX is making higher highs as the SPs are making higher highs. If you notice back in uh, the uh, uh, top of 2021, the SPs are making higher highs and that ratio is making lower highs. So I'm just saying we, we're probably gonna have a, a, a minor pullback. I still think we get back to 507 on the, uh, uh, that's the SPY 507. I think we'll find support. And I think I probably, I thought it might do this week, but I think next week's probably it. And we pull back, and uh, we'll get a, probably a mid-month buy signal, and we'll probably rock it back up, make uh, continue up higher. But, but on a short-term basis here, if if you ever bought when seventy-five percent of the month of, of the trading is above the Bollinger Band, normally that's not the best entry to get into. So I'm right. thinking still a pullback here. So and we but, we still have that big gap that's laying out there at, at what four ninety-seven. So that could yeah, right, right around five hundred, right? Yeah. yeah. And that'll so feel like a may, monster may pullback, by the way, yeah, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could hit that. So let's flip to chart two. Okay. And the bottom window is where all the energy comes from. Yes. And uh, there's only a two-day trend. A 10-day trend is actually neutral. It's not giving a lot of information. Okay. It's 0.99. So it, it doesn't really give you information either bullish or bearish. It just stays neutral. But this one on a short-term basis is pretty good. We got up to... 1.3 or close to 1.4 here, uh, you know, a few days ago, and uh, the market, you know, kind of rallied into what we're doing now, but now it's back down to 0.9. Yeah. And that's not ideal, especially a two day. Right. You know, so if we can get a little fear in the market, you know, I'll probably end with the buy. I thought we might go down to 507. Maybe we go down to the gap of, of that 500 area. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, because the trend, what the trend did yesterday, folks, even though the, you know, the, it was only a 0.70, today's we're dealing a 0.90. So for a market that, uh, well, I guess it, coming into the close, there was a lot of buy-in. That's what we saw there with the 0 0.70, because that's definitely right. a low, you know, what's, yeah, that's a low arms number. There's no doubt about that. Right. And when, you know, a lot of times around holidays, a lot of times if you go oh, yeah. Out, it's a lot of times uh, the volume drops off. Today's volume is is uh, going to be fairly light, and uh, either you're going if you're going down to the holidays, usually a bullish time. You're looking for uh, it's normally a low. If you're going up into a holiday, yes, it's, a lot of times it's a high. And I like bring this up a lot because it's. But somebody did run a uh, full moon analysis on the market. Yes, and when you do have a full moon, sixty percent of the time the market does reverse around a full moon. Okay. And somebody did statistics on that. Was I didn't do it, 
But we got a, uh, I don't know when the full moon is, but we do have a um, uh, eclipse, uh, a solar eclipse yeah. on the 11th. And and so I'm thinking uh, the last one was, what, 2017, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, I think oh, it was. Yeah. It was a long so, time ago. That's for sure. Doing, yeah, so I'm thinking with all that combination, I still think we're going to get a pullback uh, you know, next week or so. Nothing significant. It's just going to allow me to get back into the market and, and go higher. Uh, let's flip to chart three real quick. Okay. And uh, we talked about this. You know, I had a big, long chart going back to, like, 2020, and it's really hard to see. But my point is, uh, uh, on this chart, this is a weekly SPY chart in the top windows of the RSI, and I always said when you, when the RSI gets 80, and now it's 77.85 when I did it, but a couple of days ago it did reach 80, and every time it's done that, that's not the final high. You may have a minor pullback or so, I see, but the market will go back up, make higher highs, and the RSI will start dropping down. So we got a long ways to go on this market. That's my point. So uh, this impulse wave that's going on right now is going to continue. It's pretty amazing, uh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I got out of the market. I wish it kind of stayed in, but I still think I get a good chance to probably get in next no, week. No, I, I agree, week too. And, and you know, as, as so. Tim is, and I have been talking, and, you know, uh, this momentum, folks, is unbelievable. Uh, there is no doubt. Yeah. And guess what? To stop momentum, there has to be something big. So <laughs> I don't think there's anything big in the horizon just yet. Um, yeah, I mean, plus it's an election year. Yeah, you know they're not going to kill the market going in election year. Right. So my opinion, right. so there's bigger forces out there than than us. But anyhow, those those are, you know the big the big trend is up. The short term trend, I, I think there's a good chance we can get a pullback. I thought it might be this week, but yeah, I still think it's probably next week. We just don't have the panic in the market to really drive it higher. You know, so we a little slap in the face to get the trend a little bit higher. Yeah, and hopefully get the ten day trend. Maybe we get lucky, get it back up to one point two again. And that could lead up for a multi month sure. rally. But and at least the two days should get back up to around point three point. And what did happen in so. two thousand, folks? That Tim, me, and plenty of traders did not know is that gold and the market can go up together. <laughs> That's the yep. bottom line. <laughs> yep. Hey, hey, Tim, you so. have a great Easter, a safe Easter, and we look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. All right, thank you. You too. Okay, stay right there, folks, and come right back.